It's important to understand that even though Sea of Thieves is a shared world online adventure game, it's not an MMO with a persistent world. It's session based. This means that each time you log into Sea of Thieves, you're given a brand new ship, either a two-person sloop, a three-person brigantine, or a four-person galleon. All your loot and supplies are reset too. It's full of action-packed moments like exploring remote islands, battling skeletons and other players, and digging up buried treasure, but the downtime in between is where Sea of Thieves perhaps manages to soar its highest. What in most games are all too common bouts of tedium from traveling or searching for obscure items are transformed into a great source of camaraderie here. Working with your crew to coordinate and physically control each part of your ship together turns all the travel time between missions into one of Sea of Thieves' main appeals, at least if you've got some friendly company. If exploring an oceanic sandbox isn't your thing, you can grab short missions called Voyages that offer specific goals like items and treasure. But the real draw is the handful of Tall Tales. They're brain teasers that really challenge your detective skills, so it's a bit surprising you're not pushed toward them more directly as the main story missions they seem to be. Instead, you just kind of stumble across them from NPCs and lore books in the world. I heard all the stories, but to actually hold the Shroudbreaker in my hands. Progression in Sea of Thieves is similarly loose. Rather than gaining experience points to level up a character, you increase your reputation with five different companies by doing things in the world. Each company is associated with a certain activity you could pursue. Sea Dogs for the PvP-focused arena, Order of Souls for collecting skeleton skulls throughout PvE combat, Hunter's Call for gathering fish and animal meat, and so on. Sea of Thieves' unusual approach to progression also means that there are no skills or equipment you can earn that will change the way you play. You'll always have access to the exact same materials and weapons as everyone around you. It literally never changes. If it sounds like that could get old, you're right, and it's the biggest factor that takes the wind out of Sea of Thieves' sails after a while. Instead, everything you unlock, apart from access to new voyages, is purely cosmetic, including everything available through real money microtransactions. Your ultimate goal, outside of completing all the tall tales, is to hit rank 50 in at least three of the five companies to become a pirate legend, which earns you bragging rights, even shinier cosmetic items, and access to a special secret company. The lack of any real death penalty this impermanence brings is nice, but the downside is that there's also no sense of gradual growth in power. You don't get a bigger, better, or more grand ship, your character never becomes stronger, and the islands and outposts never change or upgrade at all. It's all stagnant. Without that, the grind to get to Pirate Legend can start crew plundering the vessels of would-be explorers on the open sea as you wreak havoc across the ocean, or maybe it's just singing shanties with a pet monkey. Whatever your particular flavor of piracy, Sea of Thieves' impressive open-world sandbox gives you the total freedom to do all of that and more while making its even mundane moments. Sea of Thieves has a cleverly produced and well-made introductory mission dubbed the Maiden Voyage to teach you the bare-bones basics of gameplay, but that's it.
deck approach. Sea of Thieves is a pirate fantasy sandbox with an enormous amount of things to do, made unpredictable and exciting by the addition of other players. Coordinating together across the deck of a massive pirate ship is pure chaos at times, but it's also endlessly entertaining. While the cosmetic-only progression system